We have a saying around here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no brains, no headache. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boys. What's up? What's up? Damn, son, where'd you find this? No Brains, No Headache Podcast, episode 212. Getting started off hot here with my co-host, Matt Cleary. I'm Jordan Weichel. We're going to do a good episode for you guys today. Got plenty to talk about. We currently have the Chili's Baby Back Ribs theme song stuck in our head. Uh, so if we are belting that out during the episode, just bear with us. You know, T's and P's. You get a good song stuck in your head. What can you do besides belt it out? I think how many times do you think I've sang it since I got here? 30? Yeah. I came right in, and I didn't even say hi. I was just like, I want my baby back, baby. And, you know, and then it just it goes, and it, and it feels so good just Cheese. to hit the chilies, baby, baby back ribs. Oh, all right. Episode, uh, what are we at? 212, apparently. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, Matt, you're looking good as always. The sweatshirt I bought. What is that? What's that all about? Oh, that's the yellow one we yeah, were talking the, about. The uncommon loon where I uh, attempted to not look like a moron in front of a slightly attractive uh, beer tender, and I just did my normal self. So, did you ever people ever say to you, you know, how are you so bad at social interaction? You get on stage and tell jokes. I mean, that's most of my bits are me just being terrible at life. Yeah, do you think that your style of comedy, you know, the strength is you're up there, you're hashing it out, and people are like, you know what, this guy's really giving himself a hard time. Mm, example here for you. So I was at this bar okay. last weekend, Okay. and I was waiting to order a drink at, they had two bars there, I was waiting to order a drink at the one bar that wasn't even open, and I was there for like a good 10 minutes until I realized that there's no one working here nobody was working the yeah. bar and there's matt there trying to you know get another uh get another bowl of loud mouth soup yeah ah uh, dude i was big on the jmo shots were you yeah and it did not fare well for me you crazy sob look at you i like i got a ride home from a random really i just kind of followed him <laughs> out to his car it's just like the rides, the stranger rides. Yeah, service. I just kind of got in his car. Did you give them money? No. Okay, let's walk us through the... Okay, well, I knew the person, but I hadn't talked to him in like almost over 10 years. Once again, me and you are going to have to have a discussion <laughs> off air about this, but that's fantastic. Did you have a, an aha moment where it's like... Hey! hey kind of and i was like hey and then it's he like, like where do you jumped live? in to oh, give yeah. him like a hug and then yeah, they took you home yeah it's like uh where do you live he's like uh kind of like by this part of bismarck and i was like cool on your way home can you just throw me out the door into my house you do the old tuck and roll my door and i'm like i have no idea what my house is <laughs> how long did you stand uh, there I, it was like maybe, before you realized it was unlocked. Oh, it was unlocked. It was like two to three minutes. And then I was like typing in codes and then I was just like, try to give it a shot. <laughs> I don't know. I, and that's the door I enter through. And yes, we do have the passcode access here at the NBNH studios. Only the best security. You're not getting in pretty easy. It's and unlocked the majority of the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's actually what I do first now is I try it and then I, sometimes I run into it. And then I have to pop in the old code, and then then I go through the mail. That's what I. That's kind of my routine. Go yeah. through the mail. It's on the mail table. Yep, that's um, where the mail sits. It's a table for mail. Yeah, I mean it's gotten more mail use than <laughs> ping pong use. So, do you ever have times where you want to play ping pong and you just kind of take a hockey stick and just clear off the whole thing? Yes, into like an old box that's sitting up there. And then we'll get everything cleared off and realize that I don't have any ping pong balls. <laughs> you just want to play with this crumpled up receipt and it's like, <laughs> maybe you fire up some cheese balls. I don't know. There, there's no alternate to maybe a bouncy ball. Like if, do you, you have one of those? Do we have a bouncy ball in the old uh, stage? Yes, somewhere. 
I know for a fact to have at least three bouncy balls. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord, Lord. Yes, yes, yes Lord. beans. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have a good one today. Uh, what? Okay. okay, you, you, you go. Did Did you see the break dancing in the Olympics? <laughs> Is that what that everybody's been the making chick, fun okay. of? So the chick from Australia. Okay, I did yeah. a little background research. Aka, I saw one guy's tweet. Um, That's all you need. Sometimes. Her name is Rachel Gunn. Street name Ray Gunn. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, and she won the Oceania qualifier to get into the Olympics. Uh, she was the, the break dancing qualifier. Yep. Uh, she was the only uh, qualifier from Oceania because she was the only participant. Uh, which is weird because you don't think uh, Fiji would have someone or something like that. But nope, this Australian went up there. And I don't want to say she was bad because there's probably things that I couldn't do that she did. But compared to everyone, everyone else was like literally spinning on their head for like minutes at a time. And she was just doing like what every drunk dude does on a wedding dance floor. I've seen the video reposted thousands of times on several outlets. She is and she was so bad at breakdancing. She broke breakdancing. It's not in the Olympics anymore. As of the dance? Yep. It's not in 2028. I'm just thinking of that scene in Zoolander. They have a little... First, they have the runoff, the runway off. And that's not what I'm thinking of. It's later in the film uh, where they're trying to stop playing that song and they have a break dance yep. fight in the in the audio booth, the studio. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. And yeah, if you're not twirling around on your head like a goddamn top, I don't want it. Did you ever try to do the Zoolander rip your underwear out of your pants before? No. <laughs> okay. Have you? Me neither. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that jackass skit where they hooked up uh, bungee cords around a tree branch with some whitey tights <laughs> attached to it and just gave themselves wedgies. Do you ever just see a jackass clip that like it just like it shouldn't be as funny as it is, but you just can't stop laughing? We could go down a rabbit hole right now if you want. I saw one today, and it's the one where they have, uh, like, the mural of the sidewalk and a jump, and they just bike. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was just, like, crying, laughing. Well, and then I had some sushi the other day, and there's the wasabi, and somebody was telling me a funny wasabi story, and all I could think about was when they go to Japan, and then Steve-O snorts a line of wasabi. <laughs> Tell me you do nose drugs without telling me you do nose drugs. It didn't really affect him that much. Oh, wasabi can be uh, pretty hardcore. But the break dancing in the Olympics is no more thank you to uh, uh, Team Australia. Yeah, talk about like something that was so hyped up. Like, because no one really knew about it until they started seeing these comments like break dancing's back. Is it males, females, or Both. is it wide open? No, it's a, there's a male division, female division. Gotcha. Um, she took dead last and didn't score a single point. So, how's the how's the scoring work on that? I think they literally just like scored them like one to sixteen or however many qualifiers there were. And so, like, if you were the best, you got sixteen. If you were the worst, you got zero. Yeah, but I'm, as far as getting a score. I think it's because it's panel of ju panel they, they of break down a, break dance judges. Yeah, there was like three or four of them that were like break dance experts, which I didn't think there was. But Ray Gunn has a PhD in break dancing. Apparently, that's a thing in Australia. I don't know if break dancing works too well with capitalism because the idea of a club, a bar, at least from my experience, usually pretty packed. Usually ball to ass, okay, dick to dick in, in there. Unless it's packed. Break dancing, the only way it works is if they form a circle. And that's uh, for weddings. Yeah. Maybe a wedding is a good place for a break dancer. Dude, but she was going in with like the windmills. And well, and then I kind of saw her do some sort of uh, like, kind of like attacking an imaginary enemy. Yeah. And, and then kind of came at uh, an angle at it and then kind of did the head on the, yeah. on the platform tape deal it was essentially like everyone's drunk uncle at a wedding where he's just <laughs> like get out there gary and he's just like Bleh. yeah funny enough because i went to a wedding uh, a little over a month ago and you know I, was, I probably told about on the pod that i was just tearing up the dance floor having a good time that's where the sheriff kept staring me down uh but i ended up For seeing good some of that family this past weekend and they, I was afraid to ask about the wedding because I was going to be afraid they're going to 
be like, hey, how was the wedding? And they're like, oh, you were so... And it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Usually when I have those moments, which happens about three to four times a year, um, I just avoid every single person I talk to for that for a minimum of six weeks. But they... No, they didn't. And then they actually commended me for going home at the time I did. But they stayed up partying till about three, four in the morning, and they were doing. Uh, they were they cover the floor in beer and do a little beer slide. Ooh, beer slide. Apparently, slide. it's a tradition at that venue, or maybe that town, or I don't know that family. Something, somebody's tradition, and they did it. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I left when I did. I was afraid of getting into that. Well, I told you about my cousin's wedding that they some groomsman who was just annihilated. It was me. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but seriously, um, walks Ugh. out on the dance floor with an entire pitcher of beer, and by the time he gets to the middle of it, just drops the entire thing, and then every time a song would like skip or like go in between, all you hear is. Yeah, one time I had uh, the mother of the groom made me clean up my mess. Yeah, that's tough. That was uh, needless to say, I didn't take a drink on the dance floor for the rest of the night, but. You get out there, you're doing all that physical activity. Sounds like uh, you could sustain an injury, possibly. Oh, for sure. That's just asking for an ACL to go. Well, and I just, you know, I just know I'm getting old because uh, I went for a whopping two mile walk today, quick 45er, hit flexor, done. Just out. That's, uh, you ever just throw out your hip flexor? I'll tell you the one activity that makes my hip flexor hurt sexual intercourse. Close bowling. Oh, that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's actually very true. Like my, my and my ass hurts after bowling. Well, because I get way into it, and I get way into it for someone that completely sucks at bowling. Like I'll like throw my leg out, and it's like I did the, all that work for the ball to like just barely nick like two pins on the side. Yeah, bowling is gonna wear out the gluteus maximuses and the hip flexors. You know. And you got to watch out for it. I, I'm experiencing uh, one right now. So without further ado, uh, episode 112, let's get into it. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Let me hit you with this. Hit me with it. I think trading should be more prevalent. Bartering? Yes. Have you ever watched the show? Anything? I watched the show Barter Kings last weekend. Yeah, I used to watch that back in the day. Uh, it's so awesome, but it's like there needs to be a system set up for it. But I think like it could be anything. Like if you have an employee that you don't like, like in your business, like what if you traded yourself to like another business? I think it'd be pretty easy, especially in some sort of work agreement uh, fine print. You could easily get a oh. trade clause in there, and they would have no clue. I think, like, with the amount of, like, finance, banks, like, all that, like, all those different, could be like, okay, this guy's not really contributing much, and we need a new washing machine. Yeah. Let's send him out to Hoboken. Our janitor, Daryl, passed away this last weekend in a vicious drunk driving <laughs> incident. Oh, my God, he got hit by a drunk driver? No, he was the yeah. drunk driver. We should have seen it coming. Oh, um, my. Oh, he was drunk at work all yeah. the time. <laughs> we should have said something. Yeah, he would leave work just <laughs> wasted. <laughs> Anywho, the bartering system, are you talking about is like the work humans? You want to trade humans? Yes. Okay. But are you talking about and trade anything, though? You said uh, uh, barter king or what is it? Yeah, but barter kings. But like for anything that let's say I need something. I wish there was more opportunity to trade. Who says there isn't? There isn't in North Dakota. What do you there, mean? There's certain. Have you asked? There's certain amount of things that's like open to trade, but the only thing they're they're open to trade, but they're cash. only open for like one thing. <laughs> open like, to trade for cash. <laughs> either sixty five hundred dollars, but I'm open to trade if you want to give me a check for sixty. I'm open to trade for about three pounds of gold. It's like. <laughs> Okay, essentially just currency. Yeah, that's uh, we're at the gold standard. But I think like something cool, like I have this. I wish there was like, you a, need more toys. I, I think there's like an app that like there needs to be like an app because I know like Craigslist has like the barter. Oh no, no no, you're looking at bartering all wrong, Matt. What makes trading and bartering what it is is the sense of old fashioned ability, the fact that 
you just got to have two humans agree to something to trade. Yes, you could do an app to connect these people and act as a third-party middleman, but I think that really takes away the luster. You know, that really takes away the creativity. There's really, like, no option to find out unless you're like, Matt, we're going to get a trade done. Okay. Not me and you, but I'm going to help you make a trade with somebody else for something you want. Okay, we can do a trade-up challenge. That's what I was going to suggest. Uh, you see all those all all over the intranet. Like the guy that read Paperclip and he bought a house. I mean, it was like an $80,000 shithole in Saskatchewan, but he still traded up to a house. That is pretty good. I think you with those, though, you're really going to run into an issue once you get past, especially in this economy, $10. Yeah. Well, People are probably willing to just kind of give you stuff just for the sake of it. But you're going to probably hit a ceiling where maybe your max is 50 bucks. Well, I think the guy that gave his house away was in crippling debt and was just a huge Gene Simmons fan because he traded a meet and greet with Gene Simmons for the house. This upsets me yeah. a little bit. Not the meet and greet with Gene. That's fine. Just the whole act. This is all made up. This is fabricated. Uh, he was on a TED Talk, so yeah, it's probably made up. <laughs> Is that is that the credentials for just believing anything you say is TED Talk? I think most of the time when they have a TED Talk, it's pretty fact checkable. Like this guy's like, "Yeah, I was in Iraq and both my arms got blown off." And he, as he's and, like explaining it, and he, with, he doesn't have any arms. You're like, you know what? Yeah, that tracks. I thought you were gonna say like as he's talking with his hands <laughs> that are very clearly still attached. I could see that happening. We should definitely do a trade challenge. Matt, we always, before we started recording, we're talking about all the shit we have in the studio. And I'm happy to have it, but I think it might just be time to for some of it to go. So, I mean, you have my permission. Feel free to use whatever you need to uh, trade, I guess. I don't know. Do you want here, and I'll even donate this to you, you can have my signed Troy Williamson football it's actually not even mine. It's all yours, buddy. All right. Well, do you even know who Troy Williamson is? Yeah, he played wide receiver for South Carolina, then got drafted by the Vikings, twenty second overall. I believe it was Ohio State. Troy Williamson did not go to Ohio State. Do we have a live on air bet? Troy Williamson, son, son. Troy Williamson, American. Football guy. Oh, University of South Carolina. Son of a bitch. Yeah, knew that one. What? Maybe there's... Nope, there's no... He was the uh, 12th overall. I was way off there. And he had played 49 games with 87 receptions, 1,131 yards, and four touchdowns. Yeah, Vikings, great. Uh, street value so of that can, ball, nine dollars. Honestly, M- mainly should, for the ball, but yeah. not so much. <laughs> I was thinking we should just take it out of the box and start kind of flipping it around the yard. <laughs> what if I traded it to a guy and he's like, "Sweet," and just takes out a like a rag and just wipes off the signature, <laughs> starts throwing it with his kid in his yard? That's probably what would happen. What I mean, how far do you think you could go with the trade? Do you agree with my theory that there might be a ceiling there, unless you're a YouTube influencer? I think you're you're gonna get like if you make it go viral like I've seen people do where there's people like I just want to be in this guy's video so they'll just take a loss on the trade or they like are just so rich that's what like, I'm saying yeah it's like there was a guy's like ah oh, this used to samurai sword that's worth fifty dollars like used like it chopped off a head I would think so there's still blood on it I don't know I don't know why I said used um but they'd be like here's a 2008 Grand Am worth eight thousand dollars but i just want to get on your video so i'll give it to you and i'm tired of paying insurance on it well and then the other thing is if you start getting into trading like vehicles or motorsports things like that you get yourself into a raw deal where it's like okay this vehicle is actually going to fall apart at any moment it's not even drivable you're like thanks for the trade up drive 30 feet and it just explodes (laughs) (laughs) Enjoy your remaining years. Enjoy fucking jewels. I will. Oh, that's such a great line. I uh, just found out that that movie was written by Seth Rogen and another guy named Evan, and that's why their names are Seth and Evan. Oh, 
They wrote, we're they wrote that movie when they were like 13. We're full of movie facts the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. You know what you've been doing the last couple of weeks? Is this your smooth transition nope. into golfing? I was talking about jerking off. <laughs> the last couple of weeks as well as decades. Yeah, <laughs> last so. couple. <laughs> How much time you got? I quit watch, wearing watch years ago. <laughs> Oh, well, that's so cool. Yeah, my phone. <laughs> the time. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, In my notes, I did have I'm over golf. And I think that was a spur of the moment uh, reaction note taking. So I did go golf another small town course. Seems to be my, it's just a nice vibe. But uh, the golf continues. I was thinking maybe I need to challenge myself. To just become a huge golf guy. See, the p- one problem with that is as someone that's done it, I also worked at a golf course at the time, so I got free golf and yep. a lot of times free clubs. Golf gets outrageously expensive. I mean, that is the other reason where over the years I just haven't really been too determined where it's, it's like, hey, do you want to go golf this resort somewhere that's four hours away? And it's just like, okay, you're just kind of thinking in your head of all the – associated expenses yeah, it's and it's like, just like, it's not, like i don't want to pay golf, that amount of money to get upset at myself golf 400 I'll do room, that anyway room 400 beers 1100 dollars. or or even just around here it's just like hey do you want to go golf it's like honestly i just want to get a case of beer and like go on a water vessel yeah that's and just kind of relax i like to be near the water when it's well, hot i out. watched a guy without a shirt on in this bar and they're all like, uh, sir, you got to put a shirt on or leave. And he was just like, no. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Call their bluff. Can I get you another beer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw an, an old man. This guy's probably pushing uh, 80 almost. Shirtless, helmetless, driving a motorcycle 70 miles per hour on the interstate. Oh, God. Then I tried to take a video, and he looked over at me, and it was awkward. Oh, I don't awesome. know why. I just I felt weird. Plus, a shirtless old man on a motorcycle, you don't know if he's packing. If he's if he sees you taking a video, next thing you know, he's just trailing you for a few miles. It's like, oh, boy, this is going to be tough. Well, here's why golf sucks. Oh, yeah, back to golf um, instead of uh, shirtless dudes on motorcycles. I mean, i got to get rid of this boner somehow. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're supposed to raise your hand when you get a boner. (laughs) So uh, I'm golfing with these two guys that I have never met in my entire life. I'm like, don't look like an idiot. And like the second shot, go up there and I top the ball so impossibly (laughs) bad that it almost hits my leg and like skips up, hits this tree. And I stopped watching it because I was like, oh, man. And then I was like, oh, I don't, man. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find that one. Thinking like that, it's just like out of bounds. Um, and then this guy just points over, and my ball was like 15 feet away from me. It bounced and like came back. Oh my sweet Jesus! And then I'm like, well, that's gonna be tough. So I was like, okay, screw this club. Take out a five iron. My next shot, put it to four feet. Make a birdie. Nice. You really whipped your cock out there. Yeah, that was about the only good shot I had all day. It was a pretty embarrassing round. Why, for me, do I suck at pretty much any iron? Why is that? Because they're harder to hit than every other club. Is that a fact? Yes. Less loft, less surface area. That's true. It's not teed up, and you don't have a you need gigantic get, driver to yeah, just yeah, hit the piss you, out of it. You need to get like one of those... Like they're made for like 150 year old golfers that literally every club is a hybrid, just different angles. Yeah. No, I need those. (laughs) Yeah. And I will dominate. They're called Adam's tight lies and you need to be over 70 to purchase them. Well, it looks like you got to find somebody over 70 to maybe I'll ask that guy on the motorcycle. Oh, he's dead (laughs) (laughs) for sure. He got into an accident (laughs) shortly after. (laughs) He's just going the wrong way. It's so much road rash. Like, you know what? Let's just take him out to the pasture and put him out of his misery. Um, the golf is interesting, though. I think that my biggest takeaway this time around 
and maybe it's just because like I'm not I'm literally there's like been like one person I've been golfing with and it's pretty laid back so I think that helps too when I don't have you know the three three of my the fellas behind me who are also trying to look their best I think it's a real mental game where if right now I'm just easing into it I don't really give a shit obviously you know you Say you have, like, a good drive into the fairway, and then, of course, you fuck up the fairway shot. You're like, wow, well, this, that's just great. <laughs> all, all you need in golf is one good shot to get a par, but it can't be on your drive. Yeah, on on the old approach yeah. shot, yeah, as they call it. And if you have two good shots, you get a birdie. I was thinking me and you should go hit nine someday. No, thanks. Please? All right. <laughs> We'll go, Matt. We're gonna go to our local course that we've been golfing for years. Uh, we're gonna have a, just a grand time, just a gay old time. So get this. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, so a guy calls me to play in a golf tournament, and he's like, "Hey, uh, got a tournament coming up, not this Friday, but next. You want to play?" And I was like, "Ah, sorry, I can't." And he was like, "Why?" And I was like, "Up, oh, didn't really get the." So I was like, "I don't want to." <laughs> You motorboat and son of a bitch, you old sailor, you. I got a work email today. Okay. And it said, now offering STD insurance. Okay. And president of the company that I work for is in my same office. And I was like, we offer STD insurance? And he's like, short-term disability. And I was like, well, then I don't want it. Even though you are dis- but you're long-term. Yeah, it's a, it's a mental game for me. Any more golf talk? I think it's, they're called STIs now. Sexually Is, transmitted uh, infection? Sure. Okay. I think the, the preferred modern nomenclature is STI. I don't know. Don't quote don't okay. me on yeah. that. Yeah, I don't, I don't care enough to fact check that one. Um, I don't know. Do, what, what was I saying about golf? Yeah, we're going to go play nine sometime soon. Before, oh, yeah. Before the year ends. Jordan continues golfing. Yep. I guess. That was riveting i i you know what let's just okay. well this <laughs> let's new, forge ahead this news article came out that uh and this is i'm gonna say it's a genius move that this husband soon to be husband and wife came out with instead of invites they sent you are not invited to the wedding cards oh i love these people already i uh, want one i think it's awesome yeah i want one i think there's weddings that it's like, wow, well, if I see this guy at a bar, I'm going to say hi, but I do not want to go to your wedding. I would appreciate that. Like, hey, what's your address? I want to send you a not invited. <laughs> you are not invited, <laughs> but we will still accept yep. a present if yep, you want. Exactly. That's or money. <laughs> you can't come. Registry's on the back of this card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure some people are like, hell yeah, I'll give them a gift for not making like, especially... You know, say you're the the husband in a relationship, and you're like, I don't want to go to this, and you see the card before, and so you just go ahead, and you're like, you know, I'm gonna get them a gift, and then we're all not gonna go. Yeah, it's one. I think one of the cooler things I don't know that I've seen that it could. I think in ten to fifteen years, I think this is gonna be an even bigger thing because I think there's going to be databases of everyone's address where you don't have to ask for their address. You can just kind of get it. Dude, wedding planner stock plummeting really is. I have no idea, but yeah, somebody once told me to give love a chance and I just don't know if I can do that. Was that a Billy Joel song? Is it (laughs) love? Take me down to the streets. Uh, I was, I was like, I caught the clip of step brothers where he's playing their 80s Joel cover band. And the guy's just like, play something from The Stranger. <laughs> He's dancing. He's like, strictly 80s Joel. <laughs> He's like, come on, man. Piano, man. He's like, take your skin cooker wife and get out of here. <laughs> play something from The Stranger. <laughs> I don't see what's the problem with telling him to take his skin cooker wife and get the hell out of there. <laughs> Dude, uh, there's some great A Billy Joel content. Uh, if you ever watched Brooklyn Nine Nine, the last season, the guy that plays Doctor Cox, John C. McGinley, plays uh the union rep for the police, 
and his one big thing is he's a huge Billy Joel <laughs> fan. And they're trying to distract him. He's like, yeah. And then he said that Piano Man's Billy Joel's only good song. And he's like, now that's just how. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a great write-in of, because that's the worst type of person where their whole identity is like, like say you like to, like NASCAR and racing, and it's like that's all you it's, can talk about. Why are you about. wearing a Jeff Gordon polo to work? <laughs> yeah, and that's all they they can live and breathe and talk about. It's like you try to change the subject in a conversation, you might get away from it for a little bit, but it always circles back to NASCAR, or Billy Joel, yeah. or Clark the Cub, or whatever. I I am kind of that way with Clark. Did you watch? Oh, I don't want to get too off subject, but did you watch Hard Knocks with the Chicago Bears? Yeah, and Cole Komet threw the first pitch to Clark. Yeah, how torqued were you for that scene? Uh, I stopped watching after it so I could jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually we share HBO accounts. It, it yeah. appears you didn't go back to what finish it. You must have fell and not fallen asleep. No, I turned it off like almost right after that. I was like, I lost interest in it. You're just all horned up. Yeah, nothing gets me going like Clark. If I meet him. Yeah bone city yeah. is no longer the windy city i might just like when i go to wrigley i might just not watch the game i'm just gonna wander around till i find clark yeah then they're also gonna throw on some sort of injunction yeah where I, you're no longer allowed at wrigley yeah if clark ever goes missing it was me now would it bother you if i told you there's actually a human inside of clark the cub <laughs> Maybe the trade, the trade talk. What? Hey, I want you to trade up challenge. Get Clark the Cub to come to my birthday party. I did comment on one of his uh, Instagrams that I was like, I would empty my entire bank account for Clark the Cub to come to my next birthday party. And it got like 45 likes. And then a day later, I commented on it. And I'm, like, I'm 30 years old. <laughs> that How many likes did that get? Not a one. Okay. <laughs> well, that adds up. The wedding euphoria, I don't like. And I'm actually starting to get inundated with, like, RSVPs and actually having to show up, which we probably should discuss after we're done recording here. Um, and I don't like it. I feel there's a certain amount of pressure. I feel pressure right now. I don't like that. I'm going to crack under pressure. Somebody's like, are you coming to my wedding or not? It's like, I. Why can't I be a maybe until the day of? Uh, there's a little bit of planning that goes into it. When, when a, Can when I a, say that? Can I just be like, dude, just you don't have to feed me. Like, I'll, I'll be there. I'll bring my own McDonald's. I'll bring a 30 rack for the fellas. Uh, I think I, I'm at the point of, like, wedding. I'm okay. Like I have You're giving a, love a chance. Well, I don't mind. I like going to weddings for, like, people that i'm close to like i have a ton of cousins that are all like there's like six weddings for my first cousins in the next year and i'm excited to go to their weddings but i'm not excited to travel all the way to their weddings do you think they could accommodate me and just get if married I have to in go more than five miles that's an inconvenience <laughs> Could they, couldn't they just like get married in my backyard they wouldn't even have to pay me but you can't stay here also, everybody might be stepping in dog shit. Yeah, there's a lot of dog shit and <laughs> fallen tree branches, but you can clean that up like during the ceremony. Yeah, we'll put the bar in the shed Every that's about to fall over <laughs> yeah. in a strong wind. Uh, everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, please pick up a couple sticks on your way in. <laughs> um, there's a big pile of dog shit in the northern part of the lawn, so watch out for that. I mean, what other kind of wedding gimmicks do we actually respect, though? Uh, like, I don't... I'm not a fan of destination weddings. I was going to say I am, because then I'm not expected to go. Oh, that's true. That is true. From a guest standpoint. Yeah, and that's awesome, because when they usually have a destination wedding, then they'll have a reception, and if the reception's close to me, like within 10 minutes, I'll go. What if you, that'd be so funny if you got yourself into a situation where uh, somebody had a destination wedding, you're like, oh, sweet, I don't have to go, and then they're like groomsman yeah. buddy how would you like to be my best man it's like <laughs> wow <laughs> it's like it's like you are just the parking police writing me a ticket right now why are you asking me to your wedding i can't that weekend the foo fighters are in town <laughs> so <laughs> yeah foo fighters aren't coming to bismarck 
I said in town. I didn't say in Bismarck. <laughs> going to the Foo Fighters concert. Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a weekend planned. Weddings. Not great. How's your gambling doing? Uh, I won... I'll just say it. I won two thousand dollars on JD Vance uh, being the vice president nominee. Did you actually? Yeah. No way. Yeah, that was a pretty easy one though. I felt like I was kind of taking money. What? Well, uh, I mean, I thought Gavin uh, Newsom was the favorite. Was he? Uh, JD Vance is the Republican. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting yeah, all not, these not fucking t- VP not doms. Tim Walls. I had no idea who the democrats were going to choose but well that just shows you my level of knowledge uh, yeah. <laughs> i don't know rfk i don't think is going to pull it out also him okay, I, gavin newsom was the favorite for the the, uh, Democrat. the democrats that's yep. what they're called but then uh tim uh, waltz. waltz the uh yeah the fancy dance yep um minnesota fancy pants <laughs> fancy pants <laughs> Fancy pants walls, that's what they call them. But JD netted you 2K, huh? Yeah, it's the other, it was, they announced that Trump's son was going to be announcing the pick. And Trump's son had endorsed JD Vance to be the pick. And I was Jay like, Dizzle. And I'm like, the Trumps are so arrogant. There's no way this guy is going to announce someone that he didn't endorse. So I looked at it and it was like plus 600. If anything, I think that would be the way to go. Throw them off their scent. Just go with somebody that you actually are on record of saying you hate. Yeah, but I just, I don't think that that's not the way the Trump's ego goes. So I was like, this is a layup. And it was like plus 600 something. Put down three hundo. I popped two of them off the draw. Bang, bang. Yeah, so I mean, bets between the Kentucky Derby and me getting non-solicited advice from a random that forgot to bet on it and... Uh, vice presidential races. I'm doing pretty well. Everything else, not great. JDZ. Well, I was just thinking, uh, because we were talking about, you know, in the event that your gambling takes over your life, I'm going to have to harbor you pretty much like a fugitive. Yeah. I mean, it's not far off. Like, I go down one rabbit hole. Usually it's NFL season where it's like, uh, I bet on every single NFL game and did a DraftKings on every single NFL game. I guess I'll make note if I start seeing uh, objects from the studio disappearing and you telling me about, like, losing a big bet on the Celtics. It's like, dude, the NBA is not even playing. How did you lose money on the Celtics? Esports. Like, that one time I accidentally bet on esports during COVID. I was like, I didn't know they were playing. Like, it was like Manchester City versus someone. And I was like, oh, England must not have, like, they forgot about COVID. And so I was like, sweet. And I like bet on that. And then like the final score was like nine to four. And I was like, that doesn't Dude. happen. <laughs> Years ago when sports gambling was really starting to get legalized, I was down in Colorado and I was hanging out with Denko Andy. And so I downloaded one of the apps because I was yeah. within an area where I could legally sports bet. And I was really excited about it. And so, you know, we were hanging out, me and Denko, and then we had plans to go camping for a night. Not too far out of town, but still, it's out. In the, we're in the Rockies. Hello, and so I download the app, put you know, get my money in, get my little promo. But you you don't really know how it works too well. You're still getting used to it. So I put in a bet for like the upcoming day because we were going, or I put in a bet, and these games were taking place at night. So we left during the day, and and we I didn't know we we're gonna have service or not, and we didn't. Uh, so I put in this bet. I can't remember exactly what the first one was, but apparently I had accidentally parlayed that <laughs> with, I remember this, it was St. John's men's basketball beating like Providence, and they were just a huge <laughs> underdog. And like, so this bet was like very, you know, probably, you know, not advised. No. <laughs> but I must have accidentally pressed it when I was submitting the bet. So I won my normal bet that I originally placed. And then I accidentally had this St. John's men's basketball underdog just pull off some <laughs> shitty late season basketball game parlayed together. Dude, that's aw- that's so, what that's what betting is about. Well, and then my, so it was like, I started with like 50 bucks. The next thing you know, I had like over $200 right off the bat. I mean, lost it all yeah well, but, naturally but <laughs> it's like 
Man, learn. I mean, dude, Denko was telling me how like it was legal in Colorado. So like when he, if he was driving back up to North Dakota, he would pull off at like the Fort Collins exit yeah. and get like all of his bets in for like the upcoming week he was going to be gone. Yeah, I mean that's a real bookie. Yeah. He's he's committed. He's probably got a whole spreadsheet Imagine going and everything. pulling off on the side of the interstate, just doing some bets, and a car just slams <laughs> into the back of you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. How's our MLB? Okay, MLB bet update. You know, Matt and I like to bet on pretty much just baseball and football, I think is what it is. Uh, but I wanted to update everybody on our MLB bet. So I got the teams here. Cubs lost. Cubs lost tonight? Yeah. Son of a gun. Okay, as of this recording, uh, Matt has the Yankees and Rangers for the AL. Yankees are doing well. The Yankees are 70 and 49, tied for first in the AL East. The Rangers are lingering, not really. 55. No, yeah, no chance they make the playoffs. Yeah, they're eight games back in their respective division. There's for, not, they're not even close in the wild card in the AL. For my picks, and if you've been following this, this has actually been quite the progress by the Houston Astros. Oh, they sucked. They sucked for the first quarter of the season. They're currently sixty three and fifty five atop the AL West. Check out the White Sox. That's just why li- I did. Lingering back there, forty two games back from the division lead. That's so bad. My other AL team was the Orioles, and they're seventy and forty nine, tied with the Yankees, top the AL East. So. I would say three out of our four. I got two from the AL that are looking good as of now. I mean, there's still still a little bit of time, but the season's, you know, we're mid-August. Yep. So the season's really getting down there. Matt in the NL has the beloved Chicago Cubs. Now they're 8-2 and two in their last 10 entering today, but they just lost. So 7-3, uh, and three, I'm assuming, yep. in the last 10. But let's look at the Cubs here. The easiest schedule in the NL to finish the year. Okay, they're sitting middle of the NL Central. They're only two games below 559 and 61. They've been railing as of late. They've yep. been, they oh. just can't seem to bust through that 500. When you, when you go 22 and 39 in May and June, it's pretty hard to come back from that. That is tough. The Los Angeles Lawyers atop the NL West, 69 and 49. And then my NL teams are the Atlanta Braves, second in NL East at 61 and 56. Five games above 500. I mean, they've had a bunch of injuries, but they're still hanging around. Then I got the D backs. Both the World Series teams were yeah, picked I, this I year. Think, uh, the D backs are 66 53, right behind the Doyers. So. You're looking at two uh, wild card teams, and then my Cubbies going to sneak in there. Matt, that's going to be tough for you if the Rangers and Cubs don't make it, and then all four of my teams do. Uh, no, that's that's not real tough. That's usually what happens every year. Moving on, episode two hundred twelve. Uh, I don't like. I w- I've had this thought. I don't like any of the drinks that I drink. Like, what's my most consumed beverages? Bushlight. I don't know if I like the taste of Bushlight. That's not good. I think I'd like. The I don't want to hear that right now. I mean, I'd like it better than any other beer. Like are you are you saying to me that you're having the realization that maybe beer's not good? Yeah. Have we just conditioned ourselves over the last fifteen years of drinking beer? I think it's just, like, it's just a societal norm. I think so. Like that's I don't like the taste of coffee. Do I drink it more than anything besides Bush Light? Yes. You don't like the taste of coffee? No. See, maybe if it's spicy, you just drink black coffee. Though. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I think you know. I mean, I'll hammer a, a cup of black coffee, no problem. But I would agree, like, sometimes it's like, man, that is terrible. That is bitter. What the hell am I doing here? Why am I on the toilet again? You know, there's so many questions that come with drinking black coffee. But maybe maybe a little bit of, a little bit of cream. Maybe I was going to say, I don't, want, I don't want the extra calories, but I'm fat oh as my shit. God. So it's like, <laughs> uh, oh, I'm a calorie counter. <laughs> As I'm just eating Starburst with my coffee. Although I will say the dent in the cheese ball container, not as bad. I thought I was expecting I did that have to be quite, completely I, gone. I did have quite a few of them on Saturday night. Apparently, in my damn near blackout, I did all of my laundry and ate a bunch of cheese balls, which got all over my said laundry. The laundry? So now I have to redo all of my laundry. Yeah, just like you saying that you just cycle your laundry through the... 
washer and dryer about four or five times. Yeah, and so my roommate Hef came down and he was like, "Oh, you just want me to run yours again?" Because he just assumed that it was in there. <laughs> and I was like, "No, I blackout drunk folded all my laundry." He's like, "Oh, nice." And then he's like, "Wait, did you put mine in the dryer?" And I was like, "I don't know." He's like, "Oh, thanks." And I was like, "Apparently, I did." You just did all the laundry in the house. Yeah, I used to do that in college. Uh, not laundry, but see, I would, there's a benefit to. I would uh, clean everything in college. Like I would take out all the garbage and stuff. You know, drinking has its benefits. Yeah, maybe now you'll agree. Drinking has its benefits. So yeah, back to me. Uh, I'm gonna say, and water, I'm pretty neutral on because it's water. Uh, that's why you got the purples. Yeah, I would say 90% of what I drink in liquids, I don't like the taste of. You ever had an ice cold Coca-Cola on a hot day? Yeah, that's good. That's okay, the 10%. Okay, you do like that? Like, give me a Diet Dr. P. Yeah, DDP gang for life. I think that's just that's just good stuff. Oh, man, I was so excited when I opened the studio fridge and saw the Dr. Pepper. Ooh. What do you, okay, let will shoot you this. Diet Dr. P or Baja Blast Zero? Man, you got two juggernauts there in the low-calorie soft drink game. I might have to go with the Baja Blast, and here's why. Because I feel like it wasn't widely available for a really long time. It was like a Taco Bell thing, you know, and now that Baja Blast is available... I mean, DP, DDP's always been there, and they'll always will be, and that's why we love Diet Dr. Pepper. So for that reason, in this scenario, I'm going with the Mountain Dew Baja Blast Zero Sugar. I think the Diet Dr. Pepper is like the slightly ugly chick you hooked up with in high school. She'll always be there. Mm -hmm. Baja Blast is the new chick you've been hanging out with, fake yabos. I tried this one chili and it set my mouth on fire and I had to drink a two liter of Mountain Dew. That was a breathtaking analogy, Matt. I had a Fresca the other day. Really? What the, What is a Fresca? It's a grapefruit low-calorie oh. soda. Oh. But the black cherry is also good. Where like, do you find a Fresca at? Any, a Fresca is like widely available. I just don't think anyone drinks it. Really? I'm a big uh, C-Store gas station soft drink person. I never mm -hmm. see it. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. Yeah. I guess I, I where I mainly see it is a grocery store. I had an orange Fanta Zero Sugar the other day. Not bad. Whoa. Not bad. Game changer. I'll tell you what does suck is Zero Sugar Root Beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to get the sugar in the root beer. You know what yep. I mean? Crack a cold one. Matt doesn't like the drinks he's drinking. Is that, a, is that a problem? We're going to find out. Yeah, I just think I should maybe... maybe that's Tune fine. in next week to find out more. Oh, uh, do you want to try out some jokes maybe? Uh, I got a couple new ones. And I do want to apologize if anyone's such a large fan of No Brains, No Headache, if they listen to the show immediately and also attend our open mm -hmm. mics. Yeah, you're going to hear the same yeah. shit. It just might be a little bit um, more worked out okay i got this one for you being positive all isn't always a good thing it's a situational thing pregnancy positive could be bad could be good hiv positive almost always bad pretty exclusively bad there and they go hand in hand a little bit mm-hmm what <laughs> hiv and having kids oh both, oh, okay. both as results of sexual intercourse. Oh, true. What were you thinking? <laughs> I was thinking like everyone that's pregnant had HIV or something. I was like, Man. I mean, they're more susceptible. Or carrying an alien inside of them. Um, maybe I'll just start from the bottom. Oh, this is actually I wrote this joke when I got here. I joined a new professional networking club. The first night, I actually won an award. So I was, I was really thrilled, and I was telling all my friends and family about it. And of course, one of my friends had to say, what, what award did you win, gayest? I was like, close, most retarded. Uh, Krispy Kreme had a promo where you got a free donut for every A you got on your report card. 
which is now why my fat ass now diabetic cousin got into harvard <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um like uh, the classic when you get sayings wrong one man's trash is another man's pleasure it's like have you been banging or garbage lately <laughs> Uh, do you ever struggle to keep a straight face during a story, but you're in internally just like yelling at yourself to start laughing? Yeah. Uh, my coworker just told me that her cousin was arrested in Sydney, Montana at her son's senior night for baseball for kicking a police officer in the nuts. And I had to hold it together for that one. To not laugh? Yeah. That's the funniest fucking story I've ever heard. I, I mean, any sort of incident like that where you have, is this a Karen kind of situation? Uh, no, nah, I think she's crazy. So a little Karen. Um, I met a guy who was kind of weird because he told me he wanted to be a gynecologist. And everyone's like, well, what's so weird about that? And he said he wanted to be a pediatric gynecologist. <laughs> oh, no. Was that, was that too much? Uh, I think that'll get a reaction Like my Eric Clapton joke that I love That everyone fucking hates um, I texted my ex-girlfriend Blackout drunk the other night And said Haven't seen you in a while Hope you've been shitty Texted her the next morning and said Oops I'm not really starry P.S. you can ignore that Venmo request For $18,000 <laughs> <laughs> Oh man Let's see. I believe in extreme tactics. I, I just don't like to do things normally. So when it comes to, you know, dieting, camping, religion, whatever, I think it's the best way to stay disciplined and learn your lesson or hone your craft, whatever that may be. For example, a guy runs from the cops after stealing a vehicle. He gets tased and is paralyzed for life. Now he knows he will never run from the cops again good there's always a way to tell if someone's religious they're either really ugly or super attractive if they're really ugly they just gave up and went to god if they're super attractive they're like fuck i need to thank someone <laughs> i like that that is good gotta for, be grateful for us guys that split the difference that you gotta be worried about oh and i'm happy to be in the middle of the pack i'm low room for improve 2.5 saw my ex-girlfriend at the bar the other day so i walked up and tried to be all suave and said what's your name she said get the fuck away from me and i was like is that polish what do we what is that i did write one about uh cole my barber uh at the end of not the energy source yeah okay <laughs> not lignite energy coal but um and we got to the end of the haircut and he was like do you want any product in your hair and i said get the fuck away from me and then i was thinking about it and that's what most girls at the bar say to me i got a lunch date the other day she's a pretty laid back gal when I asked her where she wanted to go, she told me that I could just pick my favorite place. So we went to the grocery store by my house. <laughs> the five ninety nine chicken strip basket hits every time. Date was cut short after I got my arm stuck in a vending machine. Yeah, but then she said, they don't even have drinks there. And I was like, whoa, 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 honey. We got a whole liquor store right next door. That's good. It's good, clean family fun. All right, that's all I got for jokes. Are you all done with that? Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, upcoming show dates, as always, every Wednesday here in Bismarck, North Dakota. If you're in the area, want to check out some local stand-up comedy. Uh, we alternate between Jimmy V's and Gideon's Brewing Company. Good news is they're about a half block apart from each other. So if we're not at one Wednesdays at 8 p.m., go check out the other one, and we will be there. Way to support local comedy, art, entertainment, what have you. There's never anything to do in Bismarck. Well, there is. You just got to pull your head out of your ass. Upcoming show dates. Is that a good way to sell to people? Is just tell them to pull their head out of their ass? It's not a bad thing. I want to be like, uh, uh, what's his name, Red in that 70s show. Yeah. You know, just tough love. <laughs> Kelso comes in with a huge firework. He's like, hey, can I light this off in here? He's like, can I light my foot off in your ass? <laughs> 
<laughs> or an out cold when he keeps on referencing shoving his foot up his <laughs> ass he's like my that, fist has got a date with your ass he's like technically that wasn't even a threat uh, that, that was, was flirting <laughs> Uh, upcoming show date saturday september 28th at dakota stage theater here in bismarck we got matt myself i'll be hosting and then we got some boys from fargo blaze kautzman's josh dulea how do you say his last name i think josh d delay josh delay he's gonna be here uh i've really enjoyed his comedy and uh, blaze has always been a homie, a past guest as well. So they'll be here. That's the lineup for the Saturday, September 28th show, Dakota Stage Theater. Tickets going on sale very soon. Also, we got Thursday, October 17th at Laughing Sun Brewing. Uh, haven't decided fully on that lineup yet, but details to come. That's a No Brains, No Headache production. And do we want to tell them about the November Road Show? Oh, yeah. I mean, that one's pretty official, too. Uh, Jordan, yeah, ahead. Jordan and I are heading, uh, taking our talents about 90 miles north to Minot, North Dakota. So if you're in the Minot area, you can come see us. Uh, I want to say November 17th. I want to say November 15th. Is it that Friday? Yes. It is November 15th. November 15th at the drop zone in Minot. So come see us then. Heard it's a pretty cool venue. And we'll leave it at that for yeah. now. Uh, what can our listeners do to get more involved? They want to support the show. What can they do? I mean, just follow us on social media. You can find us. We're uh, just search no brains, no headache. Honestly, that's the fastest way to find us on your favorite social media platform. We're on all of them, and uh, yeah, that's where you can get all the information and what we're up to. Up next, episode two hundred thirteen. Thank you so much for listening. You know, smoke a little grass or drink a little ripple, crow like a rooster, maybe challenge the mayor's son to a gentleman.